tell you when we are live. Cool. Cool. We are going live in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you all for being here with me for another edition of the Sunshine Show. I have the one and only most amazing and fabulous Peregrine Honig in the house. How are you doing, Peregrine? I'm well. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. I'm doing good. Thank you so much. For people that may not be familiar with you, do you want to give us a brief introduction? Yeah, uh, I am from originally from San Francisco and I moved to Kansas City for college and for art school, which I just recently graduated from last summer. Oh, congratulations! Thank you very much. I'm glad I was able to get it in under the wire of the pandemic. But um, yeah, so I'm an artist and I um, do a lot of just work about like the gray areas of like social structures and stuff like that. But I also do a lot of uh, poster art and album covers. And so I've always kind of had an ongoing relationship with musicians and uh, built friendships up to the music world. Awesome. So can yeah. you give us um, an example of some of the artists that you work with and do you? Um... Sure. <laughs> So uh, I've made album covers. I think my first album cover, I was laughing about doing this interview a couple of days ago because I said I, the first album cover I ever did was from, uh, was in I think 1997 for a group. There was a recording studio on Walnut Street in Kansas City and the, the, um, their hit song, song was Ugly Bitch Has Got the Best Pussy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've come a little bit further from that, that sort of quality of music, but um, like uh, Christine Brabs is a violinist in Buenos Aires. My friend Bo Bledsoe is a guitarist in Kansas City. Uh, uh, Mark Sutherland, my first husband, uh, Earl Harvin, uh, Jacob for Jazz Odyssey. I did a piece uh, called Race Riot Suites I still am very happy with. And then like Malachi Paper, so that group, and then I've been doing albums and I'm now doing a lot of work for Mike Dillon, who I'm married to. Awesome. So you are actually Mike Dillon's live-in artist. Yeah, I'm a live-in artist. Perks. The perks. Um, <laughs> I, Peregrine, I have known about you for about 20 years now because you were doing um, art for Mike Dillon. And uh, I did shows with him back in Texas um, when I used to live there. And I just remember loving your imagery because it's so... It, it, it really pops and it's just visually stimulating. Um, and, but also just the simplicity of the nature of the work just makes it that much more beautiful. Um, and so that was always something that sort of drew me into your work. I remember you did Mike Dillon's, um, was it Battery Milk? Oh yeah, the tits, the Afro girl with the, the milk coming out of her boobs. That's still like one of my favorite weird, like everybody's like so, what is, and the, this is like the burden of being a fine artist and wanting to do illustrative work that are your ideas so you're not like somebody else's hands, right? So I had this weird idea and I had this awesome Japanese designer because I'm not a designer, I'm not a graphic designer. Like I don't really know, like admittedly, how to work in those fields. So um, yeah, I got to work with Maiko Kuzunushi and we put battery milk together and yeah, it's, it's such a cool shirt. Like I love seeing people in it still. And I love that album. It's, it was a very fun album to put together. Yeah. Um, so I've known you, I mean, it's such a, it's really amazing to be able to talk to you because um, I've been such a fan of your art for so long. So thank you for um, giving us your time today and taking oh. um, the time out of your day to just sort of answer some of our questions about your art. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you so much. Um, so what, can you give us a little bit about your, a uh, little bit of history on your background as far as your influences? Um, yeah, um, totally. So I've always, I grew up in like in San Francisco in the city, like, so in the Castro. So I was always around just amazing, um, posters, like, like that kind of psychedelic, like late sixties aesthetic that's coming back that I just like, I'm total sucker for. 
And, you know, I could probably name a couple of specific artists, but really it was just a genre that really hit me, like that line work with the fade and the scooping in of the fade. And then, um, you know, I love like really like intense line work, like, you know, you know, Chile or Hans Bellmer, um, you know, people that have a huge influence on us as artists, like Shel Silverstein, like he's an artist, right? We see he really did a lot of adult work too. Like he did stuff for Playboy as well. So it's oh, like, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he had, a, he had a book that's really hard to get a hold of. It's called like Private Parts or Private Places. It's all adult humor, whatever that means. But it, they're more um, nudity and stuff than like The Giving Tree. But um, and I had a lot of really early success as a, like a, like my single digits. My work started to get documented when I was like three. So I'm in a couple of like hardcover books. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So when I went to art school, you know, I kind of make this joke with other people who were noticed early is like you kind of become a mid career artist really early in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you like I am in these big museums like the Whitney and the Chicago Art Institute and like like Yale has collected my work and and that's incredible. Like those accolades are awesome, but it's also like you know, like if you played at Carnegie Hall when you were 14, like, right? Like then what, right? Like what do you do with your, your brain? Um, so, and you know, I love music, but also if you're a musician and you're uh, like, you really are trying to make your own work, you tend to have the same like life and sleep cycle as a musician, right? So you end up in the same groups of people. Like I'm still cycling, like you're saying these 20, I've got 20 years of cycling in the same circle of human beings because even if they are all the way across the country, we're awake at the same time. You yeah. know, we're trying to get shit done at the same time. And you can understand that being a musician yourself, it's like, who can help me do this? And so you just get this more and more refined, maybe refined is not the right word, but um, secular, maybe that's the word, of people that you can like rely on in your case, it would be like, oh, that's my drummer. In my case, it would be like, oh, that's my graphic designer for this project. They'll okay. make this look really good, right? Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm influenced by music, but I'm almost more influenced by, like, I really like the sound of the song more than the song. Like, I really, I'm a sucker for how, what I see when I hear music. Okay, awesome. So what do you listen to? Is, is, do you have like particular music that you listen to whenever you're creating? Yes. Like, I don't even think I have good taste in music most of the time. Like, I do, like, like, um, I, I know Mike teases me sometimes. It's like, oh my God. But like, I love, I love listening to stories, you know? Um, I love, um, I love Leonard Cohen. Like, I love, Dolly Parton. I love listening to people do really interesting covers of songs that I've never like known the words to because they change the candor or the content of the language. Okay. Um, and like, I don't like pop music, but I'm really interested in the idea of popularity and what makes something popular. So I am interested in popular music and why something becomes popular and why something doesn't become popular. Sure. So things that are done over and over again, like you listen to the song Summertime, you listen to jazz standards and like the idea of even contemporary American music being a standard at this point, like, you know, Elliot Smith or um, like even Madonna being covered by different musicians and how they take that kind of sentimental or nostalgic journey and what they do with it. Yeah. Um... That kind of reminds me, I think Miley Cyrus did, I think, a Dolly Parton. Song. Yeah, I just was listening to that. It was so interesting, right? Yeah. Like, I don't even know if it was good, but it was definitely interesting. I thought it was like, her. she has a really great voice. And I thought yeah. she really pulled it off really well. Totally. Somebody just covered Oasis. And I was like, whatever, uh, that Champagne Supernova song. And again, like... If you're doing, making your own music out of somebody else's music, it's like, huh, you know, like as artists, we are always kind of using like the same color, 
like it's what you do with the color right yeah, yeah. so yeah that's super yeah that's a very interesting to hear you say that uh so you just kind of, so you like the the storytelling aspect of the of the music really draws you in yeah um, which funny because that's what you're doing right you're creating a story with the art that you're making totally and yeah. like you know you can listen to a song 10 years ago and then 10 years from now and it's going to mean something completely different to you like you know there's my one of my favorite writers Gary Saltz always says like art is the ability to turn material into thought right so this is the same with musicians like their material is sound so how can you turn sound into thought? And so I really, um, like my son, my friend Arrington de Dionysus, he's a, very much an artist and a, and a musician. Like he, he, you know, plays really beautifully within those um, atmospheres. And it's like, you can see a painting infinite amounts of time. It's gonna feel different to you every time you see it. And it's gonna feel different based on the room that it's hung in and how it's lit and, what you had for breakfast and and it's the same with um music like mike always says that he tries like even if a band is not that great he tries not to like talk really like badly about them because he thinks like there's always the potential for them to make an incredible album right it's the same for me like it's like there's artists where you're like oh god that is so annoying like why are they doing that but you try and like keep it close because you're like you know someday they might do something that blows me out of the water yeah yeah. You know, and, so, and you don't want it to come back to you that you're like, oh, that's so sad. Um, yeah. So tell me, oh, let's see, what are people saying? Uh, her Beatles cover was good and she does a great Jolene. I think that's what we were talking about was Jolene. That's all. Yeah. No, no, no. She did doll parts too. She did a great cover of Jolene and she recently did that, it did doll parts. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the Jolene thing was impressive too. And I love that song. It's such an, it's such a simple and incredible song. You're like, oh my God. So, um, and by the way, Dolly Parton is, I mean, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for Dolly Parton because I grew up around drag queens. So like, how can you not love Dolly Parton? And now it's like her, I think like right now she's just working on such a great legacy in terms of um, her end of life decisions with the money that she's made. And it's definitely been like a slow burn. Like people are like, oh wait, she is politically intelligent and very, and her, the way that she's spent her money, like she had a huge hand in funding the vaccine. Oh, really? Like, oh, like millions and millions of dollars. Oh, wow. I had no oh, idea. Yeah. And like whether or not you believe in vaccination, um, if you do believe in it and you do believe that this is a path towards wellness, as she does, like putting your money where your mouth is and making it available to those who do is incredible. Like, yeah, it's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Thank you all for joining us today. Johnny, Scott, Don, Zane. Um, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. For all of you that may be joining us a little late, this is Peregrine Honig out of Kansas. Kansas City, Missouri, which is like Brooklyn or New York. Yes, like whatever. Could you yeah. tell us a little bit about the building that you and Mike um, rent? We live in a, a building that was, um, it, it's, I just recently found uh, information about it from all the way from 1819. So the building itself is incredible. It's a black Baptist church that was renovated by um, my last boyfriend and uh, have, such um, a soft spot for this building. Like it's been so gracious to me and so kind to me. It's it wasn't deconsecrated by the last people that worshipped in it, so it has this really good feeling. Um, Mike's written like four albums in this church. <laughs> like it it loves Mike. Like he just wakes up and makes music in it, and it sounds really beautiful and. Um, the, my neighborhood was a, like a primarily a black neighborhood because there was the meat packing district about you know a 20 minute walk from here. And then when the meat uh, industry changed, it became most, mostly a Mexican neighborhood. And then all of the Art Institute kids who had money bought it up. And so it's a really interesting politically charged neighborhood. Like, and this place has sat dormant for a couple of years because the people that were in it, the pastor told me, 
his congregation was getting so old that they couldn't get up the stairs. So it wasn't like one of those heavy things of like they still exist, they moved. It wasn't like they were the rent went got too high and they had to move. It was like it was a choice for the congregation safety. Um, so yeah, it's a free span. So it's I have a really great I think I have good taste in art, but yeah, it's my studio and his studio and our living space. And before the pandemic, I did a lot of um, small private concerts and was able to host drawing classes, but obviously, you know. <laughs> Can you do that online though? I've been working on it and that's, you know, that's interesting. We've been doing a lot of, um, like I recently started doing like a Zoom drawing class where you can sort of buy into the link. It's hard with um, nudity, with live things, because there's a lot of platforms that don't allow for it. Sure. Right? For obvious reasons. Um, like before, I would have two models and like 10 to 15 people, and that would like pay my bills, right? Yeah. Like my utilities. So luckily, um, I got like a pretty good SBA loan and a PPP. So we're like, we're just getting, we're trying to make it work. Yeah. Um, like thus, like the, the New Year's party idea, which I think is really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, getting Mike to agree to things is sometimes like putting a sweater on a cat. <laughs> like, Come on. That'd be fun. And then he's like, Brr. Uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, I was like, well, it's not, you know, you're not going to have like a big New Year's gig. So like, why don't you have a raffle? Like, I'll pimp you out. It'll be really funny. <laughs> and like, he's like, no. Ugh. And I was like, come on, it'll be fun. Like, what? We'll do like a like like a Zoom. Like, whomever wins a raffle, we can make it really cheap, and people can just like buy a raffle ticket, and then from your library of music, they can make requests, and then it'll be just like you and some of your fans in their house safely boozing, right, or whatever. <laughs> And I was like, look, I drew a poster. Like, that's like, look, we did this. Like, I'll help promote it. Like, give me permission. And so, um, yeah, like after a little bit of it being, you know, it's kind of like a democratic, like kind of like a socialist idea. Like everybody puts the same into the pot and somebody wins a free concert. So, you know, um, and it's an excuse for him to like learn music he hasn't played for a while. So hopefully it'll be somebody that's really, like well it will put it out there like probably like today and then we'll announce it on the 23rd so that way whomever can gather their little party and and their songs and stuff like that okay cool so i will change i did create the event and i did change a few of the dates so i will go back in there i didn't know if the 23rd was enough time for us to like so oh yeah so what day is today the 17th? The 19th. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, so I just kind of, like, put it on the 28th or 27th. Perfect. I don't know. We'll figure it That's out. Great. Yeah. We'll yeah. Out. Um, but everybody, <laughs> this is basically what we're doing. We've come together, and we are really pushing for this Mike Dillon New Year's celebration zoom concert all of you guys can enter it's 20 bucks for the lottery and you get a private zoom concert you get to pick the playlist for mike dylan's repertoire of music um and you guys know who mike dylan is he's played with so many badasses but really his band the mike dylan band is the band um and he's just amazing everything that he does his costume changes the puppets um uh, peregrine is responsible for the puppets um, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the puppet idea? Well, it's so weird. Like we didn't, like we just like got married really quickly and it was awesome. It's like, okay, why not? Like we'll, either we'll stay together or we won't. Like whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, and of course, like I'm grateful for like, when you fall in love with your friend, like you're just kind of grateful for every person that they've been with before you because you're like, oh, this person is who they are because they've been with every one of these people and they had to be, and same for me, like there's no way that I could have, dealt with such a handful of a man without having been with a lot of people first. Sure. Like, seriously. <laughs> so I'm like, woo, like get ready for the ride. So um, I just, I'm like sitting, getting used to this person being, going from being my friend, like my cantankerous friend 
to my lover, to my husband, like the sudden thing. And then all of a sudden there's like a pandemic. So I think, oh, I'm going to have this marriage where like we both travel a lot, like we connect and we love and we inspire each other. And all of a sudden we're in lockdown. So yeah. we're like, whoa, well, I guess we're really married. <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, it's a true love story. It's true love, right? So, um, so with true love comes like, how to like navigate a pandemic and um so we just were like well what are we going to do like we need to make money so we started these zoom things and my friend Bruce Burstard who was an antique dealer had given me this bag full of stuffed animals so I costume like I love Mardi Gras I love New Orleans like we go back and forth pretty often and so I was just like well it can't just be music we have to also entertain so I dragged out all these puppets you know, Mike sometimes is like, don't put on the filters when I'm singing a sad song, but you're like, but it's funny, <laughs> you know? Elliot Smith with googly eyes is funny. <laughs> you know, ears, stuff like that. So I've gotten some restrictions, you know? <laughs> but I'm bored too. Like, I want to entertain myself. And he can't even see it. Like he got this article written and it was like this beautiful article about his new album. And then the person had been obviously watching the same thing and taking a screenshot of him like with these huge like filter eyeballs over his face. And he's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that, Mike. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, uh, funny. But yeah, like, I don't know, like we're all like most creative people are kind of married to the hustle already. Yeah. So like life is a little bit different for us, but it's not that different. And instead of being like, oh, I hope like a hub, I hope like the show sells out, you know, at like, you know, a thousand. Now it's like, I hope that the show where it's 150 a seat sells out at 10. Like, right. Yeah. It's different. And like my lectures obviously were canceled. My museum shows are canceled. Um, I'm still selling artwork, and the the albums are an opportunity for me to play with a, some great graphic designers. Like my friend Sean Hammondry helped me work on the Suitcase Man. But also, it's really therapeutic to help your partner write songs because he definitely pushes me, and I I might actually push him more than he pushes me in terms of like being being brought up in a, in a critical environment like with fine art is when you're not an artist when it's not your field like he is extremely self-critical um but just like we have the same lisp right uh -huh. so he can say like keys or peaches or church we have that same thing i right? noticed that I right? noticed. <laughs> so he'll say something and i'll be like nobody can understand when we say that word like you have to use a different word like oh God. I know that I can understand you be, be, and so no one can understand you right so that's real like it's such a rare list like we were at somewhere in like Asheville North Carolina and this guy was tripping balls he was like on so much acid his eyes were so dilated and he was like crying like he's like I'm not on coke I'm not on coke and we're like we know you're not on coke dude like and we said something and our list came out and he's like, you guys have to get married. You got the same list. And we were like, Mer. but then we did. <laughs> like it, it took somebody like tripping balls with their eyes falling out of their heads. It was like water. But oh. yeah, like it's one thing if you notice it, because we've always known it. We used to make up these road trip stories that only had the words we couldn't say. And then to like 20 years later, be married to the person with that same um, flaw. <laughs> Oh my God, dude, it was meant to be true. Thank you all for hanging out with us. What do we have here? Andy says he lived in a Victorian home once. It was very mysterious and impressive quality. Just a wonderful feeling. That's kind of what I get when I see yeah. the vibe with your home. It was really lovingly made and it's just got this great energy and it's called Greenwood Social Hall. Like I called it, it was Greenwood Baptist Church. So I really wanted to be reverent to the history of the space yeah um, you're always welcome we have a guest bedroom thank you yeah. uh, 
James Peterson says, John Prine is a good storyteller. Example, the story of Sam Stone. Are you familiar with John Prine? Oh, totally. Yeah, he's beautiful. Am yeah. I pronouncing the name right? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Um, what's up, Goody? What's up, Don? And Michael says, love you so much. Michael McEarren? Is that maybe one of your friends? Maybe one of mine? I don't know. We love you, too. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> could you give, could you show us an example of some of your art? Do you have any available? Is that one by oh, one? Oh, yeah. I, I have, I'm like, this is funny. Yes. So, um, this is mine. This is this girl that I printed with Landfall Press in, in New Mexico. I've been printing with them for, like, a long time but um she's got polio she's kind of like a calendar girl and i made her in like 2007 16 17. um so it's kind of interesting to be like i put her up because of the pandemic but also the over here is the we don't care bathroom sign that i produced when that bill came out where they were trying to make trans people like carry their like their assigned at birth gender around before they went into the bathroom. Um, so I made this bathroom sign. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it actually started in Durham, North Carolina. The hotel, the 21C contacted me and um, they, oh, there's my sign. <laughs> Can't talk to you right now. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Dillon. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Dillon. So um, yeah, it was the bill didn't pass. And actually, Mike was at one of my first lectures when we started seeing each other in Durham, North Carolina. And um, one of the things that people don't know is that a lot of uh, trans people have a difficult time going out in public, especially if they don't pass, because um, they don't know what bathroom to go to. And so there's a really intense um, problem with a urinary tract infections of people who are trans, which you don't think about. So actually, that bill is so oppressive. Yeah. Um, uh, it's so complicated. And of course, like, it's like that, oh, I don't want a man going into the bathroom and molesting my daughter. Well, you know, most trans people are, are like, it's a very small um, and, and like compromised and vulnerable group of people in the world. And so like, why the fuck would you even care where they go to the bathroom? Like, just like, what the fuck, right? Yeah. It's a so, great stigma attached to it. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, so yeah, the we don't care bathroom sign actually sold to um, government buildings all over the world. Um, really? Yeah, and the money that I made, which was like minimal because it's really expensive to produce small quantities of commercial looking things, right? Like if I produced like 5,000 of them, it might've been different, but there was a this healthcare program that was helping trans kids who were leaving the foster care system like help them with healthcare and stuff like that. This woman, um, Sarah Baum, was organizing it. Um, yeah, it's just, I am very interested in like beauty and and like things that are both like repulsive and attractive, which is is to like be minimalist in my line work and, and make that happen is, um, I mean, kind of like a goal with my work, like with my album covers. I think that's why they're attractive. Because you're like, oh, cool, cool, right? Like urn. <laughs> like urn's an example where it's like, oh, it's flowers, and it's actually like balls and like heads hanging from a tree. <laughs> balls? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> like the same with battery milk. It's like, oh, look at that sexy girl. Oh, my God, like there's piles of breast milk like exploding out of her. It's kind of like cum or like, what is it? Like, it's just not what you expected at first. So, oh my god, you are such a badass. Where do we find all your artwork at? Do you have a website or something that we can check out? Yeah, um, you can. Um, I have work up right now at Blue Gallery it, um, online. It's called Wonderwall. The work is, it's like a, a wall of work that's up. And then Landfall Press sells my work. Um, you can, uh, uh, Jason Locker, a Navika Project, sells my work in Chicago. And so, um, and then you can just like Google my name and my or follow me on instagram because that's where i like you know stay up late and draw things and post them online very cool um i noticed that you had about four albums that you had tagged mike in a few days ago are mm -hmm. these um up and coming albums that you're working on uh so they're all being released on vinyl in february thanks to kevin calibro and the royal potato group um 
uh, and they're just really dynamic and really different. Um, I'm not like a super fan. So like there's some stuff that I like in my, and there's some stuff I'm like, man, I really like all these albums for super different reasons. Um, one of them is very like story, like story songwriter. One of them is very, it feels like kind of David Bowie-ish. Oh, yeah. um, they're all really cool. So yeah, uh, Kevin was like, hey, let's just put these all out on vinyl. And we met the deadline and um, I was like neurotic about Suitcase Man. So, I mean, I really put a lot of time and energy into it. So uh, I know that some of the songs are released on Bandcamp. If you want to like a preview to the, it's like 1918, Shoot the Moon, Suitcase Man, and um, what is the fourth one? Um, three, that's it. The Pinocchio looking one? Oh yeah, that's 1918. So it's, uh, oh. yeah, 1918. It's got, the actual cover has a whale on it, but it's this idea of like having um, Pinocchio swallow the whale instead of the whale swallow oh. Pinocchio, right? Like Jonah and the whale. So, um, so yeah. Um, the one, the suitcase man, it really feels like artwork to me. Like, there's like this way of printing that's like a gloss and you can, um, it has no ink in it. So the image itself is kind of iconic. It's a really formal drawing, but then across the surface, there's all these other drawings. So when you move it around and the, um, the vinyl itself is like this beautiful baby blue. Nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'll be nice to have, um, products. Did um, Mike write all these songs over the quarantine? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So yeah, it's like, even it. with all that's going on and, you know, having to be in lockdown, it's kind of a beautiful thing because he was able to like do so much music during this time. And he was able to just like call in favors. I mean, I've seen Mike be a really kind and generous person to a lot of people and he is beloved and just seeing all the the incredible names on these albums that just like he would send songs out to all these like to JJ and just like people were doing tracks for him so like for months we would like he would go record at Chad Mize's studio in Kansas City and then he would like be like you know our only CD player is in the van he'd be like hey baby like come on get in the van and listen to this the new the new track on this song and we would like sit in the van in summer and like listen to these different um, pieces that he wrote. And like, it was really kind and also generous of him to like, let me help him make things, like to have one audience member for so long and just say like, oh, this is really great. But if you said it this way, it would be easier for me to understand that that's what you're trying to say. And I know that I, I like, I love him. So I have his, like, I believe I have his best interest at heart in in that way and so i can i can hear my taste in a couple of these records but mostly um you know he just is so dynamic like there's so much like like loose and refined energy in his work it's just he's so it's such a complicated beast so it's you know it's always a surprise how he navigates his medium, right? Yeah. 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 Um, wow, dude, it's been so awesome just kind of like listening to everything, your stories and just the dynamic. Um, ah, it's so nice to finally be able to talk. I, know. I feel like I met you. <laughs> um, what, Jason, tons of musicians wrote great material during this pandemic. Yes, that is one of the pluses is that we yeah. do have lots of time and it just depends how we like motivate ourselves and stay inspired i think that's the kind of the hardest part that is but isn't i mean isn't it the hardest part all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> like is that really that different Touché. I mean, Touché. Yeah, every, every day like that's the thing that people don't get like i don't create joy from darkness but um like it has forced me to revisit when there's nothing else to do with my time is like get the fuck off your phone get off instagram and social media and like draw or write or like drink a cup of tea like 
they're the distractions are very different and um you know you can't go to dinner you can't go have a drink like you can't do these things so it's definitely um and i like really nice things like and I, you know, I own a business, so I do see, I own a lingerie business. So I see two sides of this coin, like as somebody who wants to consume and as somebody who wants, who needs to sell to pay my employees and pay the bills. Um, like this has definitely been a challenge, but it's also, it's also kind of interesting to see people who are not artists kind of, it's kind of a level playing field, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, see, this is how it is. This is what we do. And um, I've really been fortunate. And so is Mike and just our, our fan base, my collectors have just been so supportive, like just on so many levels. Like my friend Frank brings me like the New York Times and like helps cover my bills. Like I'm teaching my kids how to, my friend's kids how to draw. Like, and it's like, it's different, but there is joy in it. Yeah. And considering the fact that we're going through this intense cultural revolution where people are starting to really see this, these different, like obvious levels of inequality, like I can only hope that we're gonna come out like stronger and softer and just more sensitive to each other on the other side. Like all is not lost. Like. I do see people making strides in trying to like be their better selves, like not be racist and not be sexist, and not be bigots because they maybe it's like not maybe it's very like a small step down towards um, oh, feeling that oppression or feeling poverty or or feeling fear. But um, and I would never want fear to force people to think, but sometimes it does. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Um, you have been a very um, beautiful light today in my day. Thank you so much, just uh -huh. your words, um, everything you speak so beautifully. Uh, you guys, we are going on about 40 minutes. Peregrine actually has to go to work here in a little bit. So we're going to start wrapping this up. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody that has taken time out of their day to spend with us. Um, we appreciate and love you guys so much. What's up, Eugene? Hello, Dawn. Um, do we, let's end this. Um, I want to talk about the New Year's party. So yeah. we do have the Mike Dillon Zoom concert that we are going to be auctioning tickets off for. I will drop the events link in the comments when we're done with the um, interview. So everybody has a chance to enter this lottery for the Mike Dillon New Year's concert. Um, do we want to touch on that once again, Peregrine, before we go? Yeah, it's just like, uh, get some tickets. It's going to be fun. Get it. Yeah, and like whatever, like be nice to your friends and neighbors. <laughs> Get through the holidays, and um, I'm, it's been really fun talking to you. And thank you for helping, like an artist and a musician. And I can't wait to meet you in in the real world someday. So yes, yes. Um, and thank you for helping me helping me promote this super abstract idea. And I'll share it on my page too. So yeah, yeah, of course, girl, we got this. Um, so you guys, I'm gonna drop that in the event in the comments after we're done. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to spend with me and Peregrine. If you guys want to check out her art, I will also drop a link to her um her work in the comments. You guys hit her up or uh, follow her on Instagram. Don't hit her up, um, but follow her on Instagram. <laughs> slide into those dms mike will be answering um yeah Peregrine, thank you so much i hope you have yeah. a great day and thank you so much for everything and i cannot wait to meet you on the other side girl have a great night sunshine bye, bye.